enjoy the ride with Crystal P. I am sitting here and I'm excited to say with the Jefferson County, Texas Republican Chair, Joe Evans Jr. Welcome to the show. <laughs> you, <laughs> Welcome to the show. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I have my questions. Okay, so where were you born and raised? I was born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Okay, okay. And what high school did you attend? Orlando Evans High School. Okay, is that a private, a public, well, it's, a charter? It's a public, yeah. Public school? Six okay. A school, it's a pretty big school. Oh, so how many kids is that, six A? I know it was probably about a thousand people in my graduating class, but I think that, that that's small in terms of today because mm -hmm. the, the, the area's grown where I'm from and the school's grown, so right, uh, huge campuses, you know, uh, three, four size, three, four times the size of the campuses here in Beaumont. Really? Huge, huge campus. Oh huge my campus. goodness! And they say everything's bigger in Texas. Maybe not. Well, well, you know, it, it's Orlando's a pretty big city. It you know, is. It, it's, it's huge. It's, it's metropolitan, so it's it's a huge city, uh, very populous city, and very culturally diverse city. So. Excellent, excellent. Okay, did you play <clears throat> any sports or anything in school? A little bit. I played basketball. I played okay. football as. In middle school, high school, I played basketball until uh -huh. about the 11th grade, and then that's pretty much it. Okay. Why'd you stop in the 11th grade? You kind of uh, got... I wanted to work, and okay. I knew I wasn't getting any more taller, and I was like, this probably ain't going to be... Not going to be it? Yeah, so... Okay, so what about any social clubs? Student government, um, perhaps? No, I think I was voted most likely to show up late. Really? I think in high school. I, I think about it every day. It, 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 and, I'm, and I'm late a lot these days, but. Uh -huh. And it's never an excuse to be late, but because I have like a thousand things going on, I, I can deal with it better. But mm -hmm. it sticks in my mind. I was voted. <laughs> they like, were right. Yeah, well, kind of, you know, and I don't want to tell them they're right, but right. you know, but you know, at least I'm busy, you know. <laughs> Okay, so siblings, sisters, brothers? Yeah, so I have two brothers mm -hmm. and uh, one sister, or two sisters, two brothers, two sisters. Okay, are they still in Orlando? Uh, one brother is in Tampa, one is in Orlando. And yeah, both sisters have just recently moved back to uh, Orlando, yeah, so okay. everybody's in Orlando. And where are you in that hierarchy? Oldest, youngest, I'm the youngest middle? And I'm the youngest. Oh, yeah. Well, let me rewind. So I okay. have a sister. Mm hmm. That's the same age as me, but I didn't. We, we just found out about each other like, okay, right before the pandemic. Oh, okay. So before then, I was the youngest mm -hmm. and by a long ways too. You know, like it's probably fourteen years between me wow. and my closest sibling. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, my, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. So yeah. how did y'all find out about each other? Was it one of those like DNA and me tests? I, I don't even want to go there on my dad. Uh, okay. I don't even. I don't even know, but he told me about it. And okay. Then, you know, it's scary because we grew up in the same city. We, okay. We went to rival high schools, but we went to the same college, which means we were on that college campus at the same time. So, small world. Small world. Small world. So, speaking of college, you went to Florida A and M. Florida A and M. Fam, you. Yeah. Yeah, Florida <laughs> so, Fam why did you uh, select that school, which is a historically black college? Right. Um. I don't know, you know, uh, growing up in Orlando, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know a lot about Florida and then you grow up loving the band. You, you see them a couple times a year for some reason. And so um, it's, it's a pretty big thing when you're, you know, especially at the time. And I had a cousin who was there and he was in the mm -hmm. band. And, you know, it gave me a, a glimpse into college life when we went, we went and visited him. So. It seems just kind of like the natural thing to do. And my right. mom was like, you got to go. Yeah. She was like, you just got to leave Orlando. You got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. So. Um, now, what city is FAMU located in? It's in Tallahassee. It's okay. in the capital. So how far is that from Orlando? It's about four and a half hours away from oh, Orlando. So it's far enough to be gone from home? Yeah, But yeah. not too far. But not too far, right. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's good. So what were some of the things, I would say, you took from Florida a and um, that's a good question. It, it gives you a different kind of fight. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like everything that you do at Florida a it takes time, patience, effort, and it's the epitome of no one's going to give you anything. So, 
it, it taught me a different type of perseverance, yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Were there any, dare I say, like bad things? I had a pretty good experience. Yeah. Um, I probably was the bad thing, you know, I was <laughs> college kids, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, Florida a was good to me, so good. I appreciate it. Good. Yeah. And what was your major there? I majored in history education. Oh, I love history. Are yeah. you, you know they say people go to college and they have their major, but then they don't end up working in that major. So are you like working in that major kind of? To a degree, because mm -hmm. I mentor and I teach and I'm on the school board now. So right. I, so I, I take that passion for education with me. And then I think the historical side, you know, I'm pretty political and that's mm -hmm. where, I, where my love for politics came was through my love for history. So I think to a degree, um, I thought I was going to probably go to law school or be a history professor or something, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I still may, you never know, um, but those were my goals then, and then after after graduation, um, shortly after I had my first child, so I pretty much entered the workforce. Uh, well, no, I was working on the master's, so I left that program and then pretty much jumped full force to the workforce, okay. and then that led me to California where I was there for less than a year just training and doing some work over there. I just didn't like it. And then my next stop was here in Beaumont. Okay, and we're going to yeah. get into uh, kind of why you chose Beaumont a little bit later. Right. Uh, but what was your, uh, did you pledge anything, a like fraternity or anything at FAMU? No, um, I don't know why I didn't. Uh -huh. I, I, and I don't know why I didn't do more social activity. I was, I was kind, of a, kind of a rebel. Mm -hmm. to a degree so it, it, it kind of set me aside kind of as a lone wolf to to an extent you know mm -hmm. I had, like I had, I had friends I had uh, like my childhood friend who basically was my childhood friend <clears throat> and, I, and we still stay in close contact now and he went to Florida State okay. which is in the same city right and so he and I were pretty 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 close um, but uh, yeah I never pledged or anything like that Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, what was your upbringing like in Orlando? Uh, it was a good upbringing. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom was tough. My, my parents divorced early. My dad was always really, really there. Mm -hmm. I had a good stepdad. He was a deacon at a church. He's. I still uh, communicate with him. Um, and it, you know, life was good for me. You know, we didn't grow up in poverty. We did. You know, we took. My, my parents took a lot of pride in education. Um, <clears throat> The toughest thing about growing up for me was the environment, you know, living okay. in a city that size and in, in, in the element that, that surrounded you, you know, and so many of your friends are sucked into it. Uh -huh. um, wasn't so much gangs, but it was a lot of drugs, a lot of drug dealing. Um, it was just present mm -hmm. in, in, our, in our schools, in our community. So that was probably the, 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 the most dangerous thing about it. But, you know, my parents, Especially my mom, you know, she Boy Scouts, sports, um, you know, church all the time. Mm -hmm. So just, I would say a very wholesome upbringing, you know. So do you think that was a, a major reason why you were not sucked into, like, the drugs and everything no, else? because to a degree I was, you know. Okay. Um, I just was blessed enough to escape because my mom was like, you got to go. So I was blessed enough to get out. But, you know, um, friends, family... Um, I lost so many friends mm -hmm. to just street violence or, you know, going to jail, being arrested, murdered, you know. Yeah. So that's why I work so hard now because it's, so, it's so personal. It's just hard. You got to really, you know, you have to really want to have a life outside of the environment that you see. And right. it's, you know, it's glorified, you know, mm -hmm. with the music, the TVs, you know, the these, movies. These, these, and those guys have it all, you know, at yes. least on, on, on the surface they do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it comes with a life of, you know, permanent scars and so many people don't understand that. So That yeah. is true. So let's talk a little bit more about your mom. Yeah. So she picked cotton. Yeah, I, yeah. She could, very humble beginnings, you know, yes. hard, hard work. And uh, I might cry because just recently lost her. Um, and, uh, but yeah, humble, humble beginnings. Hard working lady, you know, made her to be like vice president of a bank. She probably could have went further if she desired. Um, and she, you know, she was an educator as well. So she changed kind of like midway through her career in education and went into banking. And um, but 
what she left banking, you know, before she passed, and she's back in education, back in the classroom. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, educational values, uh, hard work, hard work ethic, um, you know, just church going, just solid lady, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? And maybe she told you, but what do you think she had in her? to start out picking cotton and then end as VP of a bank? You know, I look at, I look, and I look back on her life and I look, mm-hmm. look at the life of her siblings, I, you know, it, it was her mom that did something because all of her siblings are really successful and they all had that same, they all came from those very same humble beginnings and um, it's just the notion that you, you're not you know, you don't you don't have to be a complete product of your environment. You know, you mm-hmm. can you can move past, you know, what's out of your what's outside of your project window or what's outside of your apartment or your home. You you can move past that, right. you know, get to the next level in life. So, um, I think that was just something that was instilled in her, and she made sure I understood the same thing. And the education, of course, you know, right. Um, that's the ultimate equalizer. You know, you, mm-hmm. you bring the you bring the, the you, you level the playing field. If you can just pursue um, education and, and, and it's fullest and really take it serious, you know it's uh, you know we teach people now that you don't always have to go to college, and, and right. so it's not always about like saying oh, college education, but you do need that higher learning. You do need to uh, always strive to make yourself better. Try to read. Try to just keep your mind as strong as you can. And I think ultimately. If, if we concentrate on education and, and get back to a society that really focuses on education, mm-hmm. we'll probably um, see, our, see our communities and cultures turn back around. Right. Yeah. And as we're talking about education, your father mm-hmm. had an eighth grade education. Right. But went on to be a successful entrepreneur. So yeah, yeah. what and was he, that? And he, and he went back and got like his GED. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, once again, he, he uh, his situation, it was a situation where it wasn't really an option for him to be to, to be in school, mm-hmm. you know, so he had to work, he had to help, you know, provide, and it, it wasn't the same for him. And whereas for my mom, um, when she got when she got to the age when she was old enough, she was able to say, you know, look, I want to want to leave home and pursue education. And her mom was like, mm-hmm. sure. But for my dad, it was like he wanted to work and and, and make a life for himself and help his family um, and his siblings. So. You know, it, it was work, and but he learned. He learned business. He learned. He learned how to, you know, function in mainstream. You know, having only an eighth, eighth grade education, and I, and I, and for some for some reason, I know the educational system probably was better because his eighth grade education. He's probably one of the smartest men I knew. Wow. You know, what would I know? Because he's still yeah. alive. But uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think, <laughs> I think the education system was different. You yeah. Know, then and and like I said, he went he went back and, and eventually got his his GED just because it was something mm-hmm. he wanted to do. But um, you know, do you think? I know you said maybe the educational system was different, but do you think maybe it was the kids that were different? Like education was more important to them I think it was, at I that think, time. Well, it's one of those things that if it's hard to obtain, mm-hmm. you know, it means that much more when you can obtain it. So now. Every education is here, you know. Um, our constitution lays out that every child has the right to a free public education. You right. Know, we, you know, fifty-one cent of every taxpayer dollar goes to public ed, mm-hmm. and so now I think we've taken it for granted that you know it wasn't always that easy, and you know even some places in the world now, you know, kids would die to go to school. Absolutely. And, learn. and I think we kind of take it for granted, and I think that's our society. We we turn to a life of instant gratification. Mm-hmm. You know, we want it right now. You right. Know, uh, like Amazon tomorrow. Maybe Amazon today. You know, yeah. like... I do have Amazon Prime, I'm so. telling you. And so, <laughs> right. So, we, yeah. we, and so, speaking of that, do you want to read or do you want to, you know, you want to book by, you know, audio, you know? It's true. <laughs> and, it's true. And, 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 you know, we miss out on some things because we, you know, we want it so fast. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that hurts our society and gives us a false... Uh, a false, you know, whatever of how life really is. A mm-hmm. false sense, like what I'm saying, of how life really is. Because life is really not that way. It really isn't. You know, everything is a grind, and you see stuff play out over time. And if you can't stay the course, you may never see 
the next level. Right. You know? So. Right. So your parents, I mean, I'm amazed by their story. What did you take from that? From your father and his, um, like, how he became your mother, how she became? What do you take from that? Um, you know, I got I to gotta do better. You know, my mm -hmm. kids have to do better. Uh, we all have to do better because you know, they laid a pretty good foundation and they did a lot more with a lot less. Right. You know, so when I think about me, it was already a known fact that I was going to college from day one. Like, as far as I can remember, my mom was like, oh, yeah, you're going to college just like a done deal. Right. It'll never be a burden. I think, you know, I didn't I didn't get any student loans until I started my grad school journeys. But like, really? my, yeah, my undergrad stuff, my mom had prepaid college, you know, she oh. supported me the whole way through. It wasn't until after my, 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 uh, my Bachelor of Science that I started to incur debt. Man, yeah. do you realize how blessed you are with that? Oh, but I still have a bunch of college debt, you yeah. know, because I, I, I started a master's and didn't finish it, and then a couple of years ago I got a master's here at Lamar, so, you know, it cost, and, and that's what I tell my children, you know, like my, my, my oldest, you know, at LIT, it's beautiful, and didn't pay a dime, you know, between grants and scholarships and and, and no student loans either, so I'm yes. like, you way ahead of the game. Ahead I'm paying student game. loans still, so yeah. you better not get any because I'm not yeah. paying yours too, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Wow. So just a little bit more on your parents. So, yeah. you know, they say, uh, you know, people, parents will teach you what to do and what not to do, like through their actions. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like your parents taught you to do mm -hmm. and then what not to do? They definitely taught me to work. Okay. You know, like, I know for a fact they burned that into me because both my parents were very hard working. And um, what not to do, mm -hmm. mm, become too dependent on one singular situation. Okay. You know, don't ever... And, and I don't mean that in terms of relationships, but I, well, to a degree in relationships, but, but more of, um, like, don't have something that's so much your lifeline that if it's taken away, it really was your only lifeline, you know? Okay. So that's one thing that, because my dad is always cautious to this day about everything he does um, from a business standpoint. And my mom was always preaching you know, she didn't like my spending habits or the way I budgeted. You know, it's still horrible, but um, it's better. Mm -hmm. But um, just things like that, I think they taught me to to not be frivolous, I guess, um, in my approach to finances. Okay. Yeah. So we talked about it a little bit earlier. You moved from Florida to California and then mm -hmm. from California to Beaumont, Texas. Yes. So why Beaumont, Texas? Mm -hmm. So we, we chose Beaumont because at the time my, my wife had two brothers who lived here. Mm -hmm. um, and California was, was, it was a good experience, but it wasn't a perfect fit. And I didn't see myself staying there long term. I just couldn't get comfortable in my skin there. It just didn't feel like home. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, oh, something's flying around, I'm sorry. So it didn't feel like home. Um, sorry, I hope I didn't mess up. The no. Anyhow, California didn't feel like home. Yeah. And so I started calling, you know, back east, and um, my brother-in-law at the time, he had a, a business, like a turf company, mm -hmm. like, uh, artificial turf and stuff like that. And it was post, I think you guys had just come through Rita. Okay. And so there was storm damage and remediation work to, to be done. And so he said, just come out here, you work with me until you find, you know, what you want to do. And when you find out what you want to do, you know, I'm pretty sure you'll land on your feet. But in the meantime, so you'll have a job, home, and everything. Mm -hmm. Come on over. And now's a good time. So I was like, okay, we, we can do that. And so me and, me and my wife decided to, to come here. And, um, well, let me rewind a little bit. So I had already been to Beaumont a couple times. Okay. So when I was working on my master's over in Tallahassee, I visited here a few times uh, with Misty, my wife, um, and her brothers were living here then, and mm -hmm. you know it, she was saying maybe we should try, you know, try out Beaumont, you know, because Tallahassee is a good city, but it's a college, college, college city. Okay. You know, so if you stay in Tallahassee, you're probably going to either teach, work for the state, because it's the capital, also, mm -hmm. but it's not really 
it's designed to go to college, get your education, and then go abroad. Okay. And so, and when, and what happens is when you stay there too long, you get complacent. And so we knew we had to to, li- to leave at some point to to start building a life. And you know, at this point now we have a second child on the way. And so we that's why we left from California. But in the meantime, we we visited Beaumont, and I liked it. I really did mm-hmm. like it. And we were supposed to move, and I backed out, and so I didn't. Mm-hmm. So long story short, landed in California. Um, and learned a lot, you know, worked for my father-in-law. He has some, some, some laboratories out there. So I learned mm-hmm. a lot, um, very, learned a lot, very skilled guy, very professional guy, businessman. And he taught me a lot about the lab business. And so, which would eventually help me in the job that I'm in now. Enjoy the Crystal Petri Consultant. So it's